I'm Dr. Cindy Russell, Executive Director for Physicians for Safe Technology, and I have no financial interest in this matter. I'm here to discuss with you the health effects of cell towers. I'm a Stanford-trained physician that studied environmental toxins through our local county medical association and the California Medical Association for over 25 years. I've worked on pesticides, flame retardants, bisphenol A, fracking chemicals, and other toxins. Most currently, I've been working on wireless technology. Physicians are increasingly concerned about the health effects of this technology, and in the last two years, I've spoken at three physician conferences for continuing medical education on the health effects of wireless technology. I became interested in this topic when I learned of a proposal to place a cell tower in my daughter's school over 10 years ago, and I dove into the research. And what I learned is that seven decades of military and scientific study indicates that wireless technology is not only biologically active, it acts as an environmental and human toxicant. The mechanism of toxicity of wireless frequencies is the same as that of many chemical toxins we're exposed to. It causes oxidative stress. It causes injury to DNA, lipids, proteins, nerve cells, heart cells, the immune system, the reproductive system, and the nervous system. Health effects can be evident acutely or after long-term exposures. Acute effects occur soon after exposure and include neurologic symptoms such as headaches, nausea, dizziness, irritability, memory loss, heart palpitations, insomnia, and fatigue. Firefighters has these same symptoms when cell towers were placed near their fire stations. Thus, the International Association of Firefighters developed a policy resolution to prevent placement of cell towers on fire stations due to health effects. This is now law and codified in two California telecom bills, AB 57 and AB 537. I'm working with a town back east fighting a cell tower place without proper notification. When the cell tower was turned on, 17 people lived in the city and the neighborhood near the cell tower. They had the same neurologic symptoms as the firefighters. People are now moving out and considering selling their homes if they can. Long-term effects occur over time as the biologic damage is cumulative. These effects include cancer, reproductive failure, including miscarriage, damage to the nervous system with ADHD, cognitive decline, and memory impairment. Wildlife and insects are even more sensitive than we are and also adversely affected by cell towers. Eight out of 10 studies showed that neurobehavioral symptoms or cancer developed in populations living at distances less than 500 meters from cell tower base stations. Dodd in 2011 published a 10-year study by the Department of Health in the third largest city in Brazil and showed that within 1,600 feet of a cell tower the rate of cancer increased by up to 17-fold and those power density readings were within the FCC guidelines. Egger looked at a town in Bavaria and published his findings that showed a three-fold increase in malignancies if you live just five years near a cell tower that was within 400 meter, meters or about 1,200 feet. Mayo in 2018 published his research examining the neurologic functioning of students in two schools that had an adjacent cell tower. One tower had five times higher power density, but all within the FCC guidelines, and he showed significant cognitive decline in the students near the high-powered cell tower after two years. Pierce in 2020 has provided the most recent assessment and promotes a 500-meter setback to limit future liabilities for telecom companies. Insurance companies all have exclusions for coverage for adverse health effects of radio frequency radiation. They consider it similar to asbestos. It's a high risk. I encourage you to have a strong ordinance with setbacks and protections for the health and well-being of your community. Thank you.